Hey everybody, thanks for checking out the next video that we're putting together. This one is uh, from Austin, Pennsylvania, and it's a massive dam failure. Before I get into it, um, if you like this kind of content, please subscribe and like and share. And uh, if, if you don't like this kind of content, then uh, subscribe and like and share anyways. So I'm going to get right into it. In the early 1900s, Austin, Pennsylvania was a small but thriving town nestled in the hills of northern Pennsylvania. One of the largest sources of employment in the town was the Bayless Pulp and Paper Mill. This mill required large amounts of water to operate, so the owner, George Bayless, decided to build a dam upstream of the town. This would provide a constant source of water all seasons of the year, even in the dry seasons. At the time, there was virtually no oversight regarding the building of dams in Pennsylvania, so design decisions ultimately came down to Bayless himself. Originally, the dam was planned to be 30 feet thick. Bayless decided to cut it down to be 20 feet thick. Additionally, citing cost-cutting measures, he decided to eliminate the underground vertical slab that was intended to keep water from seeping through the ground underneath the dam. Unfortunately, problems with the dam began showing up almost immediately following the completion of construction. Water was seen seeping under the dam, but possibly even more concerning was the substantial bowing and cracking of the dam itself. Reportedly, sections of the dam bowed out more than 30 feet just months after construction ended. To try to alleviate some of the pressure behind the dam, a makeshift overflow spillway was blasted into the concrete shortly after construction finished. Despite these issues, Austin residents, especially George Bayless himself, frequently referred to the structure as the dam that could not break. Well, in 1911, following heavy rains, the dam did in fact break and caused catastrophic damage to the small town downstream. 78 people were killed and there was nearly 10 million dollars in damage in 1911 dollars which is equal to roughly 200 million dollars in damage now the paper mill and dam were shortly rebuilt or sh rebuilt shortly after this disaster but in 1933 the mill burned down then in 1942 the second dam failed fortunately this time though there was no deaths Today, the remains of the first dam and the burned out second paper mill are still visible and a memorial park has been built to remember the lives lost in the tragedy. Engineering reports have pointed to a number of causes for the failure, including being too thin as a result of the cost cutting measures, sloppy construction techniques, including concrete being poured in well below freezing temperatures, which is a major no-no, and a lack of anything to prevent water from seeping under the dam. The water that seeped under the dam caused upward pressure on the dam, making it far more susceptible to sliding. Then, as soon as the heavy rains came, these factors combined to make failure inevitable. So that's all we got for today. Uh, once again, if you like this stuff, subscribe and all that. Uh, see you next time.